Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. We are here for our weekly energy reading for the last week in October. So let's dive right in. I'm going to open sacred space. I always use um, my two favorite guides, Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron. They have, I've built such a strong connection with them over the years and they have always kept me safe. So they are who I rely on. And if anybody else is wondering who your guides are, and you can always sit in a meditation and ask them to show themselves to you. And they will speak to you. They will come to you. They will make you feel a certain way. And there's a book called Inviting Angels Into Your Life, which is really, really helpful. So let me take a moment. Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, please open sacred space. Please only allow the highest and whitest light messages to come through. Bless me, bless my cards, bless my viewers. Allow us to hear what we need to hear. Allow my viewers to feel safe, to feel protected with everything that's going on in the world. Allow them to see and witness their ego more and choose differently and choose love and forgiveness and compassion. All right. going to save. I use Palo Santo. I'm not sure if I said that out loud, but most of you guys know that I always use that in all of my readings. So it's still smoking a little bit. Okay, we are good to go. Let's see what the energy is for this week. I have a couple decks on my table and then I have my basket next to me to choose from. I've been pretty mobile lately, so I feel guided to use Kyle Gray's deck first beautiful colors all right here we go what do we need to hear spirit first message wow starting with a bang surrender somebody is surrendering to their higher calling they're so excited that it's here but they're a little timid and a little scared to take the leap to move forward towards it to feel that like Oh no, this is what I've been waiting for my whole life. And now it's time to actually do it. So this is saying you can surrender to that feeling. You can trust yourself to know that if it lights you up and it feels really good like that, that's where you're headed. That's the path we follow. We always follow um, what is the lightest feeling in my body? Where am I being pulled to? What feels right? And it's a, it's a quick little whisper. It's a quick little knowing, like, I feel like I want to do this, or I feel like I want to go for a walk right now. And there's been so many times on my journey where I leave my apartment, I go out for a walk and then I'm on my walk and I feel glued. It's like this glued energy where you're just like, I'm here, this feels good. And then like 10 minutes later, I'll bump into a neighbor, like a new neighbor, I'll meet somebody new and they'll tell me that their dad just passed away. And then I'll bring a message through and they start crying and it's this beautiful 20 minutes that we talk and then they move on with their day. And it's like their dad just made me go on that walk so that they could find me so that they could deliver the message. And this happens to all of us. It doesn't just happen to readers and to psychic mediums. We are all being moved and we have to get out of the way and surrender to that movement. You are being... <laughs> The universe wants to use you, okay? It knows, if you can think about you're like a puppet, the universe is the hand inside the puppet. The universe wants to move you through life, but we somehow get resistant and say the hand wants to go this way. And we're like, oh no, I don't know what's down that road. No, 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 let's not go this way. Then we feel anxiety. Then we feel depression because we're not following the guidance of where to go, where that hand wants to take us. That was a really good analogy. I hope that helps you guys because that just really helped me. Um, and I think I've said that before in a reading, maybe last year or two years ago when I first started YouTube, I remember talking about that, that it's like a puppet energy. The universe wants to use us because it knows what will light us up. Our mind won't, doesn't know. Like I had no idea that I would be a card reader and a spiritual teacher and then when I spiritually awakened, I was obsessed with it. That's all I could watch. That's all I could do. And then I was like, I want to be like them one day. I want to be like Wayne Dyer. I wanted to be like these teachers who were spreading love. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to spread love, share my story, tell people how I got to this space 
of just loving everybody, finding compassion and forgiveness and surrendering. So to get to that space, we have to surrender. Like I had to let go of my teaching job and realize, oh crap, this isn't making me happy anymore. My heart was beating with joy watching card readings. And that's what I was being led to. So I had to let go. It took me a really long time. <laughs> I was somebody that was like kicking and screaming, holding on because I didn't know. I didn't know the journey. I didn't know that you can take a leap of faith and the universe will provide for you. It will literally pay your bills. It'll pay your debt off if you choose the lightest feeling in your body, which is letting that hand move you. Okay, let's get the Archangel Michael deck out. I love this deck, it's so beautiful. Sword of Light. And I think I'm wrong again. I always mix up my, no, this is right. Archangel Michael, I forget. There's two new decks that I got from a client and I always mix up the names of them. I just heard, cut the deck, Michelle. <laughs> okay, they did it for me. Top card, power. You have the power to cut through any lower vibrations that are blocking you from your highest path. So this is rising up and choosing yourself. There are these lower vibrations on our planet as we're seeing the evil in our world and the destruction and it's all separation. It's all keeping us from realizing that we are connected. We're all one. So when we think a negative thought about somebody that hurts our body, it hurts our nervous system. When we are cutting at somebody else and maybe making a dig at them, comparing um, criticizing, that is hurting everybody when we do that. So we have to surrender to this higher plan and realize that we have the power to change our planet. We have it in our hands. The sword is in our hands. We have to start spreading more light. This person is reaching their sword up and they're saying, I want to be a light worker. I want to put my light out into the world. I will surrender to the plan that God has for me, that hand, I allow that hand to move me. I just had two women here last night for a reading back to back, and it was so great. One of them sat on my balcony and kind of waited for the next one, waited, waited for their turn. And in both readings, I was being guided to tell them to, or the one reading I said it, I got a message to tell them to do an intuitive day, to practice being moved by that hand. And that's what this is. This is saying like surrender and be moved. And I know I'm thinking it right now and it's really easy for me because I've done it a million times, but a, an intuitive day is just get in your car, get on your bike, go for a walk and don't plan out what you're going to do. Ask the universe to move you, to take you to your next street, to take you to the right store, to get the right item. You ask and you ask to be moved and then allow the universe to move you. And the way you know that you're being moved is say you turn down a random street and all of a sudden there's like a fox on the side of the road. And you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen a fox in months or years. And here it is just sitting there and it's not running away from you. Or it's a cute little turtle crossing the street. And you're just like, oh my gosh, if I didn't turn down the street, I wouldn't have seen this. And this is direct communication from the universe saying, hey, I had you turn down the street because I wanted you to see this magic. I wanted you to see where I was leading you. And it starts small like that, right? Like you start small seeing these animals, seeing the angel numbers, seeing the right people at the right time. And then when, it's come, when it comes time to make big choices, like leaving your job or leaving a relationship, you can then lean on yourself to know that you trust yourself when you make a small decision now you can trust yourself to make a big decision. And that little turtle or that fox then turns into, all right, I'm going to leave my job and I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent, but I know that universe is going to send me a fox and the fox symbolizes the money. You know, you take a leap of faith and all of a sudden somebody in your family gives you $15,000 out of nowhere. And you're like, what? Wait, pinch me. Is this real? Like, oh my gosh, I would have left my job sooner if I would have known that money was coming. But that's the magic of an intuitive day is you start to see how the universe shows up for you. So then in the big moments, you really trust that that money will show up. And it does, trust me, it always shows up. And as long as you're being a good person and putting it out there and feeling good about it, it will show up. Perfect, two perfect cards. We have pentacles. We have the knight of pentacles 
and then the seven of pentacles. I'll let you look at the photos real fast. So the Knight of Pentacles is slow moving. He likes to plan things out. He likes to have a little bit of like a, a nest egg before he comes to you, um, but he's working on it. He's making a plan and he sees his future. And if you're involved in his future, maybe you are the Knight. Maybe a Knight is coming towards you, which means he might be younger than you. Um, he wants to take care of you and provide for you. You might be stepping into a role wanting to provide for yourself and to take action for yourself. I'm going to read them both. Seven of Earth says seeds well planted, efforts or investments that will be rewarded in the future, the need for patience, a time for resting and planning for the future, unnecessary worry. So she is just tending to her garden that she's planted herself. So she knows that it takes time. She knows that the flowers need a little water. They need a little sunshine. She's not rushing along the journey. So this could be like a matching energy. Like this could be divine feminine, trusting the journey. This could be divine masculine, trusting the journey. And they're both very patient and slow moving and grounded. We have the Knight of Earth says, loyal, dedicated, protective, apprehensive, plan carefully before taking action, but then get going. Pay attention to the details. Wait for perfect timing, a guardian angel or someone who watches over you. And I always like to see this night, how he's illustrated in this card, like Archangel Michael. So, and you guys know, I always pray to Archangel Michael and he is definitely somebody, he's my man in this lifetime. He takes care of me. He cuddles me at night <laughs> and he just is always my protector. I actually had a bad dream last night where um, there was just this one guy that like was just chasing me and he wouldn't leave me alone. And I called the police and I was calling to get a restraining order and nothing was working. It's like the phone call, the phone would get disconnected. And then I'd go to shut the door and he'd somehow find his way in. And it was like, I was just being chased. Um, and then I woke up and I was like, okay, is this like a, a divine masculine energy chasing me? Is this somebody coming towards me that I need to be on alert for? Maybe somebody new is coming into my life, but it was an energy of chasing. So a lot of times my dreams are also messages for all of you. So I wasn't necessarily scared in the dream, but it's like, it was too much. It's like the energy was too much. Like, please don't chase me. <laughs> you're too much. Don't do that. And that's what an energy can be like for other people. If you're chasing somebody else, it makes them want to run away and get a restraining order because your energy is overwhelming. So pull your energy back, be slow, be patient, trust the journey. If this is regarding your finances, which these two cards are earthly possessions, um, we have to know that it takes time to build abundance, but you can put in the work now to plant those seeds, to water, to, to just allow it to grow, okay? There's no rush. And a lot of times we think we need to have everything perfect before attacking something or starting a project or starting a business or starting a relationship. You don't. You just need to trust yourself that the next perfect move is always going to be brought to you. That's one of my favorite things to tell myself is I'm always being brought the next perfect step. I am not in control. My ego likes to tell me I'm in control and your ego will probably tell you that you're in control and you should make this happen and you're, you're dragging your feet. And I've told so many stories over and over again on my channel and my manifesting videos about how my path has unfolded and how I left my teaching job. And then I got an opportunity to create a mindfulness program for kids. So like right now, the way the world is with everything that's going on in Israel and um, just even with 2020, like meditation is probably one of the best things that we could ever do for our planet is sending light to these areas for healing, sending good energy to people who are suffering. And I feel so blessed that prior to 2020, I created 30 videos, 30 minutes long, teaching, teaching children how to meditate, how to send love, teaching them to love themselves, teaching them forgiveness and compassion. And right now, my program is in 500 plus schools all over the US and Canada, and it's growing. Every week I get more sales. And this started in 2020. So the universe 
brought me this opportunity for me to shine my light in a new way, not just in a classroom in a school building that I did for 17 years. It was like, all right, Michelle, now it's time to level up. And now it's time to do something to reach more. So my program is now reaching so many kids. If you were to do the math, I don't even know how many kids I'd be reaching because it could be 30 kids per period in a six period day and then 500 schools. So like doing that math, there are so many kids right now that are learning to meditate with me on film. And that's what we need in this world. That is what's going to change our world is sending light and meditating and connecting to our souls. Um, so I also feel like and my nose is itching like crazy which spirit always makes everything itch, um, makes me feel everything. So yeah, like <laughs> now my nose is super red. Um, drawing my attention to what I was just saying, we all need to be meditating. My nose will, it'll dwindle down. This always happens. Um, but we all need to be meditating and sending light to those areas of our planet where there's suffering, where there's pain. And I just saw at the bottom of the deck, say yes. So this is surrendering. I just heard surrendering to the call. I had to surrender and make those videos. I was terrified. I didn't know how to film. I didn't know how to edit. And even the quality of the video is not that great. Um, and so I kind of cringe sometimes thinking that, oh my gosh, those videos are out there and they're so not good and it's okay, but the message is what's important. The meditations are what's important. But I had to surrender and say yes, even when I was in fear and so uncomfortable with creating that. I didn't know what I was doing. I hadn't even, I told you, like I had never even filmed before. So you might be feeling the call or you might get a call, a DM, an email to create something for our planet that it needs right now. And it's gonna take some bravery and it's gonna take some courage to step up and do it but you have the power. My throat chakra is going nuts right now, moving a lot of energy. You have the power. And I also just heard, wow, this is divine masculine and divine feminine working together to build something so magnificent. You are gonna build something together that the world needs. So please surrender to this plan. You have the power. Like now that I look at the cards on the table, it makes total sense. <laughs> and my watch just buzzed. Perfect. Birds before land, rainbows are a sign that happy ending is coming soon. I posted a rainbow on my community page recently. I felt like that was a really strong sign that we're moving in a different direction as the, as the world changes and um, we start to see more of the darkness, there is still going to be that rainbow at the end of that storm. So we have to keep the faith and keep meditating on it. Birds before land is before this connection can happen, you're going to start to see other people coming into connection. You're going to start to see other couples creating something together, doing something together. So birds before land is always kind of like somebody's out at sea and they don't know if land is in sight. They can't see it. Well, they know there's no land in sight, but they don't know if they're getting close or not. And all of a sudden they see birds flying. Birds are symbolic of there's land close because they just came from land. So the boat is now knowing, okay, we're getting closer to land because we see birds. So this is saying when something new is coming into your life, the universe sends us these birds, these breadcrumbs, these things that remind us of what might be coming in. So you might be seeing somebody else stepping into a partnership. Like I said, you might be seeing somebody else building something or creating something and they might call you and say, Hey, I'd like you to be a part of this. Yep. King and queen. You're not going to settle. Okay. You're not going to stay in situations where your soul is feeling like it's like hindered, like you're not able to grow. You're in a box. It's saying it's time to come out of that box and surrender. I'm going to keep going with Micah Magic, and then I'm going to get a Course in Miracles deck. Love is all around you. Ah, infinite abundance. So this thing that you guys create, it's the, there's a reason why you got the two Earth cards, the two Pentacles cards, because it's going to create endless abundance. But it's not just about money. It's about the feeling and the, the substance of what you're creating together. So 
your mission is you bringing more abundance of peace and love to our planet, not so much money. That just is a byproduct. But you're going to be bringing more love to our planet. And you're going to surrender to this higher plan because that's what your soul really came here to do. You came here to teach people how to love. And what in whatever way that feels good for you, like for me, it feels good to do it through these readings and through my everyday life and smiling at people in stores and waving at people in my Jeep that I don't know and people walking on the street and I walk by them, I say hi to everybody. I'm always, always leaving people feeling better than when I found them. And I know every conversation is me leaving that mark because if I can impact every single person I meet or come in contact with, then I'm helping them spread their light now because they're going to feel good. That love is all around them. They're feeling that energy from me. It's like I go and fill their cup up and then they can go spread it to everybody else. You have that same mission. We are all here to be spreading love and peace and joy and forgiveness, but we first have to be it to do it. Okay. To experience it. Okay. Let's do a course in miracles. Let's get a message from God. Our holy source, what would you like to tell us? I just heard, connect to yourself. Every single day, everybody needs to meditate and connect back to yourself. This is so in alignment with everything I just said. Forgiveness offers everything I want. It says, each lily of forgiveness offers all the world the silent miracle of love. So if lilies are a sign from you or for you, here you go. This is your confirmation. Forgiveness offers everything I want. When you forgive others who have hurt you, who have hurt others, you're hearing a story about somebody who did something wrong. I need your first thought to be, this is what I really find joy in doing. And I really, I'm really glad I learned this lesson is we forgive everybody. We see, oh man, they must have just not, they, they, maybe they didn't know better. You know, they didn't learn this yet, or maybe they weren't given the tools. My brain somehow can easily, and my heart can easily go to, it's a pattern for them, or they just haven't learned it yet, or maybe they've never experienced love and that's why they're so angry. So my best advice to all my clients is I always like to tell my clients to imagine every conversation like you're coming into a conversation with a child that's hurting. How would you start to speak? How would you start to be with that person? You would handle them with kid gloves. You'd give them a hug. You'd show compassion. You would just listen to them. You wouldn't try to fix them. And that's what this is saying. Forgiveness offers everything I want. When you give from your heart and your soul, that is the greatest feeling on the planet, at least for me. I always say my small interactions with people throughout the day or me shedding light on how one of my clients can forgive a parent who's hurting them, can forgive a grandparent, an aunt, uncle, or somebody that may have abused them. When I can maybe offer up another space that they can go to in their brain and how they can see it differently, that's my greatest joy because I now know that that person is gonna be living in a little less suffering that night when they go to sleep and they're going to be releasing more of that pain and more of that trauma because they can see it and find forgiveness for it and see that that person just didn't have the capacity to love them. One of my favorite analogies is if anybody has ever hurt you, think about them as a 10 year old and you just gave them the car keys and said, drive me to the store. What are they going to do? They can't drive. They don't know how. They've never taken driver's ed. They don't, they've never, you know, operated a heavy piece of machinery. So the same person that hurt you, you're giving them the keys to your heart and you're telling them to love you when they don't have the tools. They did not grow up in a house where they experienced what that might have felt like or looked like. And here they're experimenting with trying to learn, and you happen to be get getting hit in the crossfire of that but yet you're holding all this anger and resentment because you think they should have treated you better. But would you yell at that 10 year old kid who can't drive? No, you would just see them and be like, oh, it's okay. You know, you'll learn eventually, I forgive you. That's how we need to treat all humans who are doing poor things on our planet. Yes, there is evil out there, but everybody has some sort of glimmer of hope and a heart inside of them. 
you know, there's so many stories where you hear where, you know, there's in movies or people are going to war and there's this one person on the bad guy side who set somebody free, who put their gun down and they walk away. And it's like, they have this little bit of humanity in them where they choose differently. And if we can all be that light and show the way for all of these people that are causing harm, that are, you know, in judgment, criticism, even the darkest people energetically in your life who are so negative, you could be the one person that just shows by example how to love and how to forgive and how to have compassion that that might shift their energy. They might see you just not judging them and not fighting back at them and they might become more aware of what they're really doing because you're not responding like everybody else. So keep that in mind. That was a really good message. Okay, we're gonna do two more decks. I have a, a little purple angel deck. Release and surrender. Okay, we have two surrender cards. What is going on here? Okay, I need my glasses. This is really small print. I'll show you the photo. Really beautiful purple. We shower you with bless blessings of our radiant love. Open your arms and release the challenges that you've held tightly gripped within your hands. Open your hands, arms, and heart to our love and assistance. I like that they said that. Open your hands, arms, and heart. I always say open your eyes, ears, and hearts. Um, to our love and assistance. So this is basically saying this is the forgiveness. When people have done hurtful things, we have to learn to forgive them. We need to just walk this earth saying it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This is teaching me a lesson. This is teaching them a lesson. I'm not going to hold this resentment and this anger. Because essentially what you're doing is if you're holding anger and frustration, it's hurting you. And it's hurting everybody around you because you're feeling that energy. So when we can release and surrender, we're letting go of, of whoever has hurt us. Maybe this is divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Maybe somebody walked away from you and you were just so upset about it. <laughs> and you're like, I can't believe they did that to me. They, they said they would always be there for me. But you needed to heal that abandonment wound. You needed to know what it feels like to not have that person to know that you're perfectly fine without anybody, because that's your sovereignty is learning that you're whole on your own. And we don't rely on people. People are beautiful kindred spirits that we can walk this earth with, but we are not relying on them. If somebody walks away from us, they do not take our happiness with them. And that's the forgiveness that you need to step into of why somebody might have left you. Instead, you need to be thanking them because they're showing you more of how you're whole and you're happy and you don't rely on them. And then when they come back in, if they do, you forgive them, you release and you surrender and you say, okay, let's start all over again. Let's have a fresh start. Let's build this connection in a new way because now we both are not codependent on each other. And sometimes people we've never even met end up being our soulmate or our twin flame. And we've never gone through the separation phase, but the universe brought us all of these catalysts, all of these people that we dated that transformed us to prepare us for this person. They often say the person that you're ready to build your life with and to grow with. I always like to see it as I would love my divine partner to be somebody who's kind of like holding the ground for me or maybe it's like a cute little container and I'm just dancing in it, having fun, but they're just there to hold it. And they're not forcing me. They're not manipulating me. They're not trying to push me in a certain direction. They're just watching me and they're just like cheering me on. And I do the same for them. I hold that space for them to grow. So it's a space where the, if the person's holding me, they're not going to let go in a sense of, when I'm crumbling, they're not just going to walk away from me. They're going to be there to support me. They're going to ask me what I need. And they're going to know that I am going to find the answers myself, but they're going to still be there to allow me to expand through my difficult times. I hope that makes sense. So it's not like I need them when I'm going through a difficult time, but it is so supportive to have a supportive partner there to mirror back to you what you need to hear, how you can grow in that moment. 
and to know that you can crumble every once in a while and have somebody hold you and they're not going to leave you when you're at your worst because a lot of people do that. So we want to make sure we're picking a partner who's going to be the ground that can help us heal and that can help us grow and expand on. Um, and knowing that we're okay if that ground weren't there, but it is a benefit to have it. It's like a fine line. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, now we're gonna do an animal, animal card or two, see what comes out. My glasses are like bifocals. So like when I look up and down, it makes me dizzy because it goes from one lens to the other. And I'm always like, oh my gosh. Feeling super dizzy. Wow, we have the stag, the hummingbird, and the koi. We got the lizard. Okay, lizard, koi, stag, hummingbird. We'll start with the lizard. Dream the world into being. So this is about using your using your uh, manifestation abilities and your imagination to co-create this new life for yourself. So now that you're understanding forgiveness and compassion, how can you use that good energy to propel you on your journey? Um, to say, source, please show me my next step. Please show me the right direction, the right action to take. I know the, the next perfect step will be shown to me, but change me into a person who can dream it into being. And then the koi fish is saying, if you are needing to surrender to a job or a relationship to leave it, you're going to be provided for. The koi always represents abundance and it represents this opportunity to walk in faith and know that you'll always have everything you need every step of the way. It says there's always enough on that card. The stag is, believe it or not, the divine masculine. So this, when you see a stag, this is a message from spirit that somebody is needing to step into their divine masculine energy or their divine masculine is on their way to them. And it's because you've aligned yourself to spirit. When two people are designed or God has created two people to do a mission together, the only way that they can come together is when they're in that sovereignty, when they're in that wholeness, when they're not relying on somebody else to, um, to make them happy. They have both found their way. And the stag card is symbolic of you found your way and the stag is coming and it's saying, hey, now it's time to do our mission. We both found our way. Now let's show up for the world in the way that we intended to. We've just cleared all of our traumas for years and now it's time to shine. And then that's the hummingbird, which I love the colors of this card. It says, be here now. So all we have is the present moment. So if we're continuing to offer compassion, forgiveness, no judgment, we're treating everybody with kindness, we're being in the present moment. And look, it's like a heart. We're being love. That's all we need. That is doing our mission. You don't, you don't need, you don't need to be doing more. You're always going to be shown the next right step. It's always in the present moment. And the hummingbirds, they always move their wings super, super fast, right? It's like fast moving. So this is saying, slow down, take it all in, drink that nectar, just chill for a minute and appreciate everything that you have because right now is all we have. And when we feel good in the moment, we can be led and we can see that next step and take it. Perfect ending to this. When you're in the present moment, you can release and surrender because you're aware of your thoughts, you're being grateful for everything that you already have, you're recognizing the love that's within you, and you're forgiving yourself for your past mistakes and choosing differently moving forward. And you're forgiving others as well. So this is a huge reading for forgiveness. You're not going to settle. You're, you're going to surrender. You're going to follow the call of your heart. And you're going to trust that you're always being provided for. You always have everything you need. And you have, the, you have the ability to create more. All right, lovies. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this is a magical week for you. Comment below and let me know what resonated. I love hearing when certain readings are for certain people. It just fills my heart up. So thank you so much for being here. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.